This episode is brought to you by Talkiatry. Say hello to Talkiatry. They offer virtual in-network psychiatry to treat the most common mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, OCD, and trauma. Within a week, Talkiatry will match you with a doctor who fits your needs and takes your insurance. If you're ready for more accessible, more human psychiatry, let's talk. Get started at Takayatri.com slash start. That's Takayatri dot com slash start. Figuring out how to do college is just the same as you figuring out how to do kindergarten and then figuring out how to do middle school and figuring out how to do high school. The schedule is different. The requirements are different. The interaction with your professors is different. During this first semester, you are learning the rules of the road, so to speak, right? It's like you've moved to London and you're driving on the other side of the road. Welcome to Fluster Clucks with Lynn Lyons, where we talk about how to manage those tricky emotions that show up in all families. Serious stuff without being too serious. I'm your co-host, Robin, and I'm Lynn's sister-in-law, and I'm here to ask your questions. And I'm Lynn Lyons. I'm an anxiety expert, speaker, mom, and author, and I've been a therapist for over 30 years. Parenting can be a Fluster Clucks, and I'm here to help you find your way. And I'll even tell you what to do and what to say. Lynn, we got a really interesting listener question that was actually more of a listener request. And there's a mom who has some college kids and high school kids in her family. And some of her college kids have really reported the mental health situation at their schools and among their peers still being pretty tough and the COVID impact still being very much felt uh, just because the adolescent population was so impacted. I think that the high school and college students would love an episode just for them where you could give them the little pep talk that I know that they need. I think it's really good timing to have this pep talk and I'm happy to give it. If you're in college and you come home, this is maybe the first time that you've been home for a while. So you're interacting with family members and, you know, you've just had this first chunk of time away from home. And then if you're in high school, there's a lot of pressure right now, particularly if you're a senior and you're sort of going into the home stretch of high school, a lot of pressure. So I am happy to give a pep talk and I think it's well-timed. So teenagers, young adults, here's what I want you to know. You are supposed to be feeling a lot of things. You are supposed to be feeling as if the world is a little shaky under your feet. It is probably the case that over the last few years, you have had to handle a ton of stuff, including COVID and all of the disruption in your life. It's interesting. The first episode that Robin and I did on this podcast was about FOMO how difficult it was for teenagers to feel like all their experiences were being taken for them. For the large majority of you, life is fairly back to normal, but I think that you missed out on a few things. One is that you missed out on practice being as independent as you wanted to be. Your parents missed out on the ability to give you that practice. So you may be figuring things out a little later than maybe would have happened five years ago in terms of getting your first job or being away from home or managing your finances. Or even social practice. Yeah, social practice, right? Meeting new people, going out on dates, hanging out with people, making decisions for yourself about what substances you're going to use or not use, right? All of that was put on hold. And even if it wasn't put on hold, it was distorted in a way that really, I think, is impacting you. One of the things I'm hearing a lot from the teens that I'm working with and from their parents is that there is this urgency to play catch up, that there's so much you missed that you have to pack it all in. So I was talking to a a senior in high school recently, and she was saying, we missed out on so many things. So I just have to make sure that my senior year is just full of all these things. And she's absolutely not only exhausting herself trying to do so much, but still feeling as if she's never going to be able to catch up. The reality of this is, is that we all missed out on things that we're not going to be able to redo. And that's just not fair. That's just the circumstance that we were put in. So just acknowledge that and make sure that you give yourself a little more room and a little more 
grace and a little more time to figure these things out. That said, you have to figure them out. In this period of time where maybe you didn't feel as independent or your parents didn't have the opportunity to let you be as independent, you still have to move out into the world and start making these decisions for yourself. That can feel overwhelming. You're going to screw up. You're not going to do it perfectly. And you're not supposed to do it completely alone. One of the best things that you can do as you're moving through this time is to determine for you who are the best people for you to get help from? Who are the best people for you to get advice from? What are the best sources of information? Getting your information from people who don't know what they're talking about. This may sound like an obvious tip, right? Don't get information from people who don't know what they're talking about. But I'm just going to say it. You guys are getting a lot of information from people who don't know what they're talking about. There are really good resources, including adults, that you can go to to get accurate information. When it comes to your moods, when it comes to your relationships, when it comes to your mental health, when it comes to your functioning, consider the source. What we know is very clear. Things like stress, things like depression, Things like anxiety are contagious. These are very socially driven things. And so if somebody is telling you or if you are getting information that is making you believe that there is something wrong with you individually, that there's something wrong with your brain, that this is a permanent condition that you can't fix, that's not the source of information that you want to go to. Social stuff either positive or negative, has a huge impact on how we function as human beings. You do not have to blame yourself if you are having difficulty with your mood. You don't have to blame yourself if you're even feeling like the college that you chose wasn't the best fit for you, or you're having difficulty academically, and this is the first time that's happened. This is not something you have to blame yourself for, but pay a lot of attention to where you're getting information about what to do next. Because here's the thing I want you to know. Your brain is incredibly malleable. You are learning, you are growing, you are making different connections, both socially and inside your brain with neural pathways. The more that you accept and understand and appreciate how changeable you are, the better off you're going to be. It is absolutely normal to get overwhelmed by your emotions, to have difficulty with relationships, to experience heartbreak, to have difficulty with conflict if you're living with a roommate or you're trying to figure out what your social group is, either in high school or in college. All of that stuff is normal, and it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. When you are having a difficult time, What I want you to think about is this. What are the skills that you have that are going to help you navigate this difficult situation? And who are the people you know and that you care about and that you trust that have those skills that can help you develop the skills of your own? In other words, use the skills you have, appreciate the skills you have, recognize where the deficit is in your skills and seek out expertise or at least good guidance from people who have those skills. Why don't you talk a little bit about some of the skills you're thinking of? Because, you know, you really break it down to the most simplistic way that we live our days. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest skills for you to pay attention to is your ability to be flexible. The more rigid you are, the more perfectionistic you are with yourself or with other people, the more intolerant you are of yourself, your own flaws, or those of other people, the harder your life is going to be. If you can be flexible, that does not mean that you don't plan. It doesn't mean that you give up on organizing yourself or thinking ahead. It means that when things don't go the way that you expect them to go, the way you want them to go, you recognize that as a normal part of life 
and you figure out how to adjust. So if you are a teenager listening to this and you have your driver's license, the analogy that I use all the time is that when you were little and you were watching an adult drive, you thought that they just held the steering wheel and they just pressed the gas. What you have figured out, because now you drive yourself, is that it's a series of constant adjustments. This is what your social interactions, this is what your academic interactions, this is what life is all about, is making adjustments. Pay attention to rigidity versus flexibility. I also want you to recognize that when you are having a huge, powerful, emotional reaction to something, because a lot of things can cause that, that again is normal. Give yourself time to work through it without coming to catastrophic conclusions about what's wrong with you. Time helps. When you are having difficulty with your emotional self, time helps, and these feelings are not permanent. The other thing that really helps is paying attention to the basics, the things that make you feel better or the things that make you feel worse. Know that when you come home from college, if you've come home after your first semester or even your second semester, chances are that you've just gone through an exam period. You've just had finals, which means that you were probably not sleeping very well. You probably weren't eating what you should be eating. You probably weren't getting exercise or doing your normal activities that make you feel better. You probably weren't having that much fun. When I used to go back to school after Thanksgiving and then I knew that I would come home for Christmas break, I would call it the season of suffering. You just went through that. Give yourself some grace, but pay attention. Pay close attention to the things that you do that make you feel better and the things that you do that make you feel worse. And then the third category is the things that you do that make you feel better in the short term, but make you feel crappy in the long term. You are, as you're becoming a young adult, as you're learning how to manage you, you've got to figure out your own operating system. What are the things that you feel proud of, the things that you can handle? Where are your weaknesses? Where are the traps that you get sucked into? And how can you just begin to make small adjustments as you become aware of them? You are a work in progress. So skill number one, you've got to learn how to be flexible rather than rigid. In all areas, right? Where can you be flexible? Skill number two is the ability to pay attention and learn what makes you feel better and what makes you feel worse. Your mood is greatly impacted by what you do or don't do. Robin, let's take a break because the skill of all skills I want to talk about, but I want to give it ample time. So let's take a break and I'm going to talk about that last skill. So Robin, I bet you're getting geared up for the holidays. You know I love the holidays. I know you do. I know you love decorating. Your house always looks so beautiful. How about gift giving? I'm getting my grandmother the skylight frame and I have been wanting to give this to her for months and I'm so excited. It's an easy gift to give and it's all about connection really. So the skylight frame is this very genius use of technology. It's a beautiful black frame with a white mat, very classic looking. However, it's connected to a Wi-Fi network and you can send photos to your relative and they will get updated automatically. So this is an amazing gift if you have relatives who are not with phones. For example, my 98-year-old grandmother. I'm so excited to share photos of our family with her in real time. I think this is such a genius invention. I'm going to get one for my parents as well. The thing that's great about it is that all of the family members can send photos to this one frame. It's a great way to keep large networks of families in touch. You can choose two different sizes. There's a 10 inch size and a larger 15 inch size frame. And if you don't love your skylight, they'll offer you a full refund. You can get $15 off your purchase of a skylight frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code FLUSTERCLUCKS. To get $15 off your purchase of a skylight frame, just go to skylightframe.com and enter the code FLUSTERCLUCKS, and that's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T frame, F-R-A-M-E.com. Promo code is FLUSTERCLUCKS. 
Robin, you know what I love about our listeners? What's that? They are so engaged. I mean, we've got a great group on Facebook. We get questions all the time. These are a group of listeners that are just really thinking about things. They're really trying to do the best for their families. These are people who are really paying attention. They're really trying to make things better. They're looking for answers. So if you have a company and you're thinking, gosh, I would like to advertise in a podcast that has really engaged listeners. I would like to advertise in a podcast that has customers that are looking for solutions, that are looking for things to make their lives better. I think we're a really good fit. If you're trying to make a family's life better or a parent's life better, we've got your audience. So let us know and sponsor your company on Flusterclux. Go to flusterclux.com under work with us and you'll get all the information that you need to advertise your business. Okay, we're back. Okay, Lynn, what is the last skill? I think I know it, but I might be wrong. What is it? All right, well, you tell me what you think it is because maybe you have one that I haven't even thought of. Well, as you were talking, I just remember the season of finals and then going home finally and doing nothing but sleeping. Mm -hmm. But I also think, especially because of the impact of COVID, I think so many teens and college students are walking around with this deficit of connection. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think that it's really important to think about how you can give yourself the connection that can make you feel full. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep, that's it. Connection, connection, connection. And it's a little bit of a two-sided coin because a lot of times I know when kids are coming home from their first semester in college, they may have had really high expectations about what their connections would be like at this point in the process. You know, a lot of times kids will go off to college and they'll say, you know, this is where I'm going to make the best friends in my life. And this is going to be the best time of my life. Going away to college this first semester, you're still working on meeting the people that are your people. So if you're coming home and you're feeling like, oh, I don't really have a close group of friends or I was with a group of friends at the beginning and I'm realizing these aren't the people that really are, are going to be my friends, that's totally normal. The fact that you're thinking about that and paying attention to that is really helpful. Connection is key. And I want you, when you're home, and high schoolers, when you're on school break too, I want you to think about who you're going to spend time with that really fills you up. What are the connections? Who are the people in your life? It could be relatives, your cousins, your parents, your siblings, your best high school friend that you haven't seen for a while. How are you going to make an effort to have in-person, face-to-face, enjoyable connections. Because isolation, we know, loneliness and isolation are absolutely risk factors for depression. And so if you are feeling alone, if you are feeling disconnected, if you are feeling isolated, this is something you really want to pay attention to. And let somebody know this. Ask for help. One of the things that's tricky when we're feeling depressed, when our mood is low, is that we have to do the exact opposite things that our low mood, that our depression is telling us to do. So it's very counterintuitive. It's the same with anxiety. Depression, when your mood is low, when you're worn out, when you're feeling lonely, depression tells you all of these things that will make the problem worse. So it really is about pushing back with support and doing the things that you know intellectually will make you feel better, make you function better, even though in the moment your mood, your body, your physical self, your emotional self doesn't feel like it. Which brings me to my last piece of advice. If I could put in a piece of gum the skill of being able to do things when you don't feel like it, if I could bottle that skill and have you ingest it and do it, I would be a gazillionaire. You sure would. (laughs) I would, wouldn't I? Yeah, for adults too, because this is adults. This isn't just kids, right? As you're home during this time, as you have this break, what I really want you to pay attention to is don't let your feelings be your complete guide to what you do to take care of yourself. 
don't fall into that trap of saying, well, you know what? I don't feel like it, which means I must really not want to do it. Or I feel so crappy. So that means there's something wrong with me. Your emotional self, your physical self, even your social self respond positively to being engaged in your life. And if you are feeling particularly worn down by what you've been through over the last few years, if you haven't been out in the world, if you're feeling hard on yourself, if you're feeling disappointed by all the things that the adults in this world are doing right now, because there's a lot to be disappointed about, a lot to be angry about, one thing I highly suggest you do is give of yourself. While you are home, if you are feeling like the stuffing has been beaten out of you, if you're feeling a little dejected, if you're feeling whatever you're feeling, even if you're feeling great, actually, give of yourself. Find some way for you to volunteer, to offer meaningful connection with other people. The research is so, so clear, particularly with teenagers that are feeling depressed, volunteerism, giving of yourself, doing something for other people is really much more impactful than most other things that you could do. Giving of yourself is going to be better, more effective than most of the other things you might come up with. And I know you're going to roll your eyes at me, but I'm going to say it anyway, is move your bodies exercise. It's cold outside. It's dark outside. If you live in New England like I do, get out, move your body, go for walks. A wonderful way to connect with friends is to combine perhaps doing something for other people. So meet with your friends at a soup kitchen, meet with your friends at some place that needs volunteers, and also to meet with your friends, go for a walk, play touch football, go hike up a mountain, move your bodies. This is a time for you to take care of yourself in ways that are not sedentary, isolating, and not internally focused. Okay, so let me just tell you that I've talked to a lot of kids who have gone off to school or are in high school, finishing up high school, who really struggled this semester. I had one client who went off to college with high hopes, right? This was going to be the school for her. It was where she wanted to be. And when she got there, her roommate was not a good fit. They didn't really have a lot in common. She took one course that she was super excited about, but it was much more difficult than she had anticipated. She was getting grades and comments that were totally foreign to her based on doing well in high school. And her immediate response after the first few weeks was that she had picked the wrong school. Maybe she wasn't cut out for college. She didn't know how to get herself out of this hole. She was spending a lot of time just in her room by herself. And here's what I told her. And so here's what I'm going to tell you. It is okay for things not to go well. It is okay for you to have to figure things out. It is okay for you to make adjustments. She did several things which really worked. I told her she needed to get involved in one organization, just pick one. The first time she went to the meeting, she sort of stood outside the door and she questions whether or not she should walk into the room because what if she didn't like the people? She had all these doubts. She went into the bathroom. She looked in the mirror. She splashed some water on her face and she walked in and actually made some really lovely connections with people that then gave her a place to go and something to do that felt meaningful her. I forget exactly what the organization was, but it, it was a volunteer of, of helping people out. The other thing that she needed to do was that she needed to say to herself, and I said it to her first, the roommate that you have that you didn't choose is really a bit of a crapshoot. Some kids go off to college and they are lucky that the roommate that they have is fabulous. That's just luck. There are many, many kids who go off to college and it's not a good fit. This is an opportunity for you to learn how to be flexible. It does not mean that you have to live with this person or you're not capable with living other, with other people. 
I know that many kids, this is the first time that they've had to share a space with somebody else. So it has its challenges. You will get through it. And forevermore, you will probably, not 100%, but you will probably have a lot more say in who you live with and who you spend time with. So think of this as a learning opportunity for you to practice being flexible. The other thing that I told her was that figuring out how to do college is just the same as you figuring out how to do kindergarten and then figuring out how to do middle school and figuring out how to do high school. The schedule is different. The requirements are different. The interaction with your professors is different. During this first semester, you are learning the rules of the road, so to speak, right? It's like you've moved to London and you're driving on the other side of the road. You've got to give yourself some time to figure it out. And parents, if you're listening to this as well, which some of you may be, this is not a time to panic. It is very common for kids to come home from college after the first semester and think about transferring. My advice is to get through the year and then think about what you might want to do and think about adjustments you need to make. This is a time of adjustment and flexibility. You are learning, you are growing, you are connecting. Give yourself some time and recognize that feeling your feelings, feeling uncomfortable, not knowing what to do is absolutely normal. It's absolutely normal. Wouldn't it also be helpful to just think about if you've had a really rough first semester and then hearing your advice of the things that you have to do, sort of take ownership of the choices of how you've been living have led for you to feel the way that you're feeling. Yeah. If you haven't been socializing with people that feel good, if you haven't been taking advantage of connecting out on the campus, if you have been kind of hanging out in your room, especially hanging out in your room with a roommate situation that isn't good, how is that going to feel good? It's not. Right. That's unfortunately what I see a lot of kids doing, young people doing. I say kids because I'm old. I know you're not kids. Is that I see a lot of people doing is that they then they come to the conclusion that there's something horribly wrong with them, where it's really much more situational. They have to learn some skills. And then, like I said a few minutes ago, you have to do the opposite of what your depressed mood wants you to do. And that can be hard. Ask for help. Let people know what's going on. But this is not a permanent affliction that you have. I'm seeing too many kids self-diagnose themselves with things that it's just not accurate. I really want to warn you against doing that, right? Get the help you need. Figure it out. It's not about blame, but it is about responsibility. We can connect what you're doing or not doing to the way that you're feeling. And I think to sort of think that this is just something that just happened or, you know, you caught it like a cold, that's not how this thing works. So it's time for you to do a little thinking. If you are listening to this, by the way, because you're having a rough time, maybe your mom or your dad said to you, you know what, you should listen to this podcast because Lynn's going to talk directly to you and you're feeling defensive. You're like, oh, well, I tried that and it didn't work. Well, that's not, I'm different, right? You're not, you're not. I am telling you stuff. I'm giving you the information that I give to my clients. I am a good therapist. I've been doing this for 32 years and I know what works and I know what doesn't. So let that defensiveness show up for sure. But what I am saying is valuable information. Just let it in, right? Just let it in. If you say to me or you say to your parents, well, I tried all that stuff and it didn't work. I don't believe you. <laughs> Maybe you tried it once and it didn't work, but this is a process. Constant adjustments hang in there and don't believe all the information that you're getting about your mental health or what's wrong with you based on TikTok and Instagram. This is good information I'm giving you, and it would really, really be a good idea for you to take it to heart and to try some of the things that I'm telling you to do. We have to have the skills of learning to do the things that we don't want to do mm -hmm. in order to have a life that feels good. I know. It feels counterintuitive, right? It feels like, oh, I have to do these things I don't want to do to feel better. And the answer is when it comes to taking care of you and taking care of your mood and taking care of the connection between your mind and your body and your health, yes, 
You have to do things that as you start to do them, you might not feel like it. Motivation is not what you should rely on to get yourself started doing things. You're going to have to start to do things even if you don't feel like it. I swear, if I could bottle that, I'd be a gazillionaire. Just give it a shot. Give it a shot. Let's take a quick break and we'll talk more about that. Hey, everybody, this is Robin at Fluster Clocks. When Lynn and I are not having a great time recording our podcast on the weekends, I have a day job. I have a travel magazine for families. So if you're thinking about a 2023 family vacation, don't plan anything without reading our guides to the best Disney hotels, the best way to get a Disney guide for less, and everything you need to know about booking a Disney cruise. Lux Recess has been since 2014 the go-to place for parents to read about luxury travel with honest reviews written for parents by parents. Check it out. The links are in the show notes for our best guides to Florida travel for your spring break in 2023. That's LuxRecess.com. L-U-X-C-R-E-C-E-S-S.com. Okay, Lynn, what were you saying? The other thing I really want you to pay attention to is that if you felt like you were gypped, right, you didn't get time to do all the things you wanted to do because of COVID and you went to school and you just sort of like let it rip, if you are engaging in a lot of behaviors or using substances in a way that in the short term feels like fun, if you're self-medicating your feelings, if you're trying to fit in socially, just take a step back from this. During this period of time, as you get a break from school, as you're home during the holidays, just take time to step back and really assess the things that you're doing, be it drinking, smoking a ton of pot, staying out, not getting enough sleep, hanging out with people that you know or sort of not your people. Just really give yourself an opportunity to examine that honestly. I know it feels good. I know that it was great to sort of get back into the world and have all these experiences. But if you don't know your limits, and if you are during this first semester at college or as you're moving through your senior year in high school, if you are now discovering your limits and you are coming up against things that are not feeling so good for you, take an honest look at that. I've had a lot of kids that I talked to. There was one young man that I talked to that I know went off to college, and really got himself in quite a hole pretty quickly because he was drinking so much. I wouldn't say that he developed a substance use issue, but he wasn't doing his schoolwork. He wasn't getting sleep. His weekends were spent drinking and then recovering from hangovers. And pretty soon, he found himself failing all his classes. I think probably at the end of this semester, he's going to be on academic probation. His parents are kind of freaking out. And what we're talking about is how did he sort of step into this arena feeling pretty unprepared and how did he get in over his head and what is he doing differently? So pay attention to that. Again, I'm not judging you. This isn't about shame and blame, but it's about figuring out what worked and what didn't and what do you need maybe to pay attention to in terms of that kind of stuff as well. So Lynn, if you are not a high school or college student, but you are a family member and you want to show your love and support, what is your advice for them? My advice is to not give too much advice. When your child comes home over break and they are having some difficulty or they're talking about some things, the first thing you need to do is listen, 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 right? I want you to really be empathic. Stay away from giving examples of yourself Well, when I was in college or when I was in high school, that's a really quick way to shut down conversation. They really don't want to hear about your stories from the 80s or the 90s. Except Stranger Things has made it a little cooler. Yeah, I guess a little cooler. Yeah. So listen and then think about problem solving. Help your son or daughter put things into the category of what are things that I need to do something about? What are some steps I can take? And what are things that I'm still learning about and things that I need to tolerate? But just don't jump in there with a lot of lectures and a lot of advice and a lot of, well, when I was your age, listen and open the conversation. The other thing you really want to pay attention to is do not panic about their emotions. Listen to what they're saying. 
If they say things that are really distressing, if you've got a child who says they're thinking about harming themselves or they're having thoughts that are very concerning to them or to you, pay attention to that. But if they are expressing what would be well within the realm of normal adjusting to college emotions, don't panic, right? Empathize, normalize, listen, and move into problem solving later down the road. Also know that when they come through the door, if they've been gone and they've, they're coming home from this semester, just it's going to take a few days for them to act like normal human beings again. They're usually tired, stressed out, et cetera, et cetera. Also know that they want to see their friends probably more than they want to see you. Don't take that personally. Treat them like young adults, but keep your mouth shut. I'm going to have to end with my most common piece of advice that applies when your kids are in college too. Talk 85% less. Listen, don't lecture. This is a very typically bumpy time, this first time home. You may have gone through some of this at Thanksgiving too. And just take a breath. Talk, problem solve, listen, empathize, don't lecture. (laughs) And happy holidays. And happy holidays. My son went through this his first semester when he came home for Thanksgiving. I was down in the basement, which enclosed from the washer to the dryer, and he came down the basement steps and he started crying. And he said that he didn't really feel like he had friends and he wasn't sure he wanted to go back. And oh my God, it was so, so hard. But we got through it. We talked about it. We got through it. We problem solved. It's a tricky time. It's a bumpy time. And so having had two kids that have gone through this, there's a lot of low moods around the holidays. So hang in there and do the things that sustain you. And don't get all caught up in this holiday stress ridiculousness. Yeah, that's what I have to say. It was... (laughs) That's such a bah humbug ending. I know, I know, I know. (laughs) For people who are new to listening to this show, just to be clear, one of us really enjoys the holidays (laughs) and one of us doesn't. (laughs) And I bet you can figure out which one it is. Yeah. Listen, here's my last piece of advice to you, right? Don't get sucked into all this crazy (laughs) holiday Christmas shenanigans, right? Don't be a holiday sucker. (laughs) This is why I host Christmas and not you. (laughs) If this episode was helpful to you, you can join our Facebook community and we'd love it if you left a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Fluster Clucks. Bye, Robin. Bye, Lynn. If you like this show, there's a decent chance you'll also enjoy The Shameless Mom Academy. Hi, I'm Sarah Dean, the founder and host of The Shameless Mom Academy. The Shameless Mom Academy is a podcast for moms that centers moms more than it centers your kids. I'm not going to teach you how to make baby food or how to make your three-year-old or 13-year-old stop having tantrums. Instead, I'm going to bring you back to yourself. For the last 20 years, I've been helping moms through growth and transformation. Inside the Shameless Mom Academy, I help you identify who you are and who you are becoming. Look, motherhood is hard. It brought me to my knees many times and sometimes still does. Returning to who I am and who I am becoming allows me to decide how to show up in all those sticky motherhood moments, but also in all my other relationships and in all the ways I show up in my various communities. So come check out the Shameless Mom Academy wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm willing to bet you'll leave feeling a little inspired and maybe even completely fired up. And you'll probably laugh a few times because I promise we never take ourselves too seriously over here. With 700 episodes to choose from, you're likely going to find something that sparks and speaks to you inside the Shameless Mom Academy.